subsea currents, we can assume that the package will do the same thing. So if we can line up that package with that spot by moving a ship right now, mm -hmm. then the vehicle and Atalanta will head due south-ish and get away from that second wire. Due south? Yeah, that, I guess because the because the ship's kind of at 315. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So do you understand what I mean with the offset there? I do. Yeah. Okay. So I don't actually know where the location is on the ship that the wire is going to be. I mean, I know approximately. Can we get that info over to Nav so we can get that ship move in? Well, so what's the distance right now between Atalanta and our LZ? Uh, what is LZ? Landing the, zone. Sorry, the landing, landing zone. zone. Uh, about seven meters, eight meters. So is that the ship move we want to call? That'll put Atalanta above the landing zone, but not the second wire above the landing zone. Yeah. So we want to keep going more than that. Whatever the distance is, we want to get the point on the ship, like this point-ish mm -hmm. above there. Okay. But I don't know where this point-ish is. Do you know, do you have a good estimate of where that is I've, i haven't seen john's uh, i mean it's going to be it's going to be coming from the winch that's just forward of the yellow crane yeah and the yellow crane is going to be outboard what yellow 14 crane. meters or so, 10 meters off the stern i don't remember no not that far i have no idea no it's probably just going to be a few meters outboard i don't know i think six meters yeah of course yeah okay more 10 meters maybe so some 10 meter ish point will get kind of downish. <laughs> I think we might have Is to just helpful? sort of do some adjustment once it's down uh, low. Of course, yeah. Of yeah, course. yeah, I mean, okay, so what I have right now, this is a four zero meter move yep. bearing 170. Yep. Start with that, see where it gets us. Sure. Yeah? Yeah, it might be, it might be a little far, but that's fine to start with. Let's do that. Okay. Is the ship, is the pink ship in high pack, like the correct size for yeah. the Nautilus? Yeah, it should be. Okay, so yeah. Sweet. Okay, let's try three five meters, 170. Sounds great. Okay. Bridge nav. I'm gonna be back here for this, so where do you guys wanna be? Can we move three five meters bearing 170, please? Thank you. Okay, do we want to call the deck now? Um, start getting them ready? Yeah, are they already rigged down there, AJ, ready to go? I think they were, they were as rigged as they could do. Okay. Uh, they're standing by. Okay. But okay. Probably want to give them a heads up. Okay, once the ship is in position, and we program. are going to want to swing the vehicles out of the way. Yeah, yeah we're going to bring them pretty much due south. Okay. Because I think that's the farthest we can get from okay. the wire. Sure. So as the ship's moving, we can start dragging. Start moving ourselves south. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pull out the one of the two. I don't remember which one. I'll pull it out and slide her forward. There's going to be a I think new, it's the top one. There's going to be a new beacon in the water. Do you have the information on that beacon? We do. Yep. Okay. Okay, so Dave, when you're ready, let's start hauling the mail south. And you can drag Argus or uh, Atlanta, and Josh, you can do whatever you want with your heading. Probably gonna end up facing the ship. Whatever I want. Landing so. I got you in all autos too. Just screwed up. 
going to be really slow if you try to move in autos. Yeah, I'm not going forward at all. Right? Yeah, because you're, yeah, you're speed limited when you're in autos. So there's your auto, your station keep. Leave that on. Don't worry about that. That enables your game. So you have your auto XY, that's your whatever, auto heading and auto alt in this case. And because it's so light, you end up needing about 70% to stay down. You get stick lock on too. So you're locked with zero inputs. There you go. Takes a while to see that move in Atalanta, eh? Yeah, about there five it minutes goes. per thousand meters. Nope, false alarm. If you're dragging it, you can get get there, but see, it, like if you move the ship and wait for Atalanta to swing, it's about five minutes per thousand meters. Do you want to radio the deck and let them know that uh, it's go time? Yep, we just did. Okay, great. The ship's not in position yet. Yep. They can get set up or whatever. Josh, you want to fix your heading there? Do I though? Yeah. Let me reword that. Hey, Josh, fix your heading. Which way do you want me to face? You're going to face an opposite perk, so pretty much north. Remember the net, what the offset was for the transom to Atlanta before we started all this move? Or how, Sorry, how far it again? was? You know, like it wasn't going straight down, some water current was pulling it away a bit. Oh. How that was? I don't uh, remember. No, I don't. That looks pretty good though for ship wire spot to landing target. Probably. Maybe ish. Yeah, I mean, we want like here over the target, yeah? Yeah, but the wire's not gonna go straight down, it's gonna wing out. Gotcha, gotcha. By yeah. that, whatever that mm -hmm. distance was. From yeah. That Looks like that's ship move complete. Yep. Looks like they're getting the crane up and everything rigged now. Bet we'll be ready at the same time. Perfect. How fast does that winch go down? We're gonna send it at one meter a second. We just don't want to exceed the terminal velocity of the package. Nope. The winch can go pretty quick. Yeah. But rough estimates of terminal velocity look like 1.7. Yeah. So at one meter a second, it'll take us about 40 minutes. Yeah. 
just in time for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, let the deck crew work. I know. We'll feast. We'll feast. <laughs> we shall feast. Get the clients right on here. As per client request, no breakfast for the ROV. It's okay, I'm on a diet of no food. <laughs> Once you get stretched out, feel free to land. I mean, or hover, or whatever you want, no matter. <laughs> Thank someone that he already did a line of that Excel spreadsheet so I can copy and paste it. Thank him. Right. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Dave. Is the ship moving again? Nope. No. Remember back in the day to plagiarize? You didn't have all these AIs. You had to just copy and paste from websites and then change every other word with the synonym function in Word. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Life is hard. Yeah, I barely passed. So you optimized. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, you're, what, what's that thing you have now? Chat, is it chat GPT or something? Yeah. I don't know, some kind of AI that writes all your essays for Does you. It all for you. Go get yourself a PhD next week. <laughs> <laughs> Go get myself a PhD. Anyone want any Ritz crackers? Get a Ritz run. Sure. Yeah, it's a long time till breakfast, man. It's a long time till breakfast. They got some bars down there. What are we half an hour away from breakfast? Yeah. I can't afford to lose any more weight. Man. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's getting dangerous. It's coming off too quickly. Oh, look at this. Oh, no. I don't... Hey, ROV, I'm going to go step out onto the deck, so uh, be good for Jeb, will you? No. 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 <laughs> no, we will not. Oh, i got to change the time. Oh, sorry. So they're not 
Papa called in there is not the same as Papa called on there. We got res, motor, yeah, term, and main. So term is high voltage? Yeah. And main is main comp, I would assume? Yes. And then res. craft comp? Where's That's that the shilling one, I think it's number, is it number two on there? Oh, it's a different, the bubble, different yeah. gauge somewhere else. It's the shilling comp. Okay, well, I guess I should right actually the porch. read them. Uh, 3.56. Yeah, all right. Uh, let's see. Well, no. that's two. Uh, that's one. That's three. There you go. So what am I, that line on the comp, the actual comp itself? The yellow line. Oh, okay. Yeah, and there's a, a gauge down the side there, that white strip's got numbers on. Five. Five? Yeah. Is that, that, that Alright, that'll work. Okay, what else we got in this line? Temperature. Uh, yeah, click into any one of the green. There you go. 15.8. That's important. I gotta have some changes, otherwise right. people think I'll just copied you. Thank you, Mick. I'm a cracker. I'm alright, thank you. Bridge Nav. The deck is trying to call you on the radio, channel one. Yep. An adult. What does this mean? Which one? The com for Atlanta. What am, where am I looking for that? And that? <clears throat> Two times comp percentage? Yeah. Yes, that's it. Uh, Just that gauge? It's basically a, a, an estimate. Okay. Not the gauge, Not the gauge the, the, from the white line to the top of the comp. And so I've got it. It's still the same. It's about 50%. Oh, 50%. I, see, I see it there. Roger. Okay. <sighs> What am I looking at with this topsy turvy ocean on the wall camera? You're looking at the ocean. <laughs> right? So the beacon's going to be about 30 meters up bottom, 32 meters up bottom. 
off the off the end of the wire. Yeah, it looks great. <clears throat> With everything on. Change nothing, make everything work. Love it. So we just bring the hook into here and then get the ship to move the hook into the, ar into yeah. the arm, yeah? I think so, yeah. Okay. Don't worry, Dave. I'll just put these periods in here for you. I'll just finish your work. It's no big deal. Well. You missed some periods, but it's okay. I got it. It's fine. How many volts was it? It was uh, 1,215 volts. volts. That's good. That's sufficient. Get all the volts in there. I must have removed them. <laughs> I removed them. Then I could put them in again. Yeah. And then tell them it was your fault. <laughs> Job security. Rep yeah, repetition is the key to success. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, you've never heard me play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> What did you bring with you? The acoustic or? Yeah. Electric with a. Yeah, man, with a with a do. fifty thousand watt amp. A generator on the, on the bridge deck. <laughs> yeah. Of the crackers in the house, like. Yeah. Mm. Blow the doors off the bridge. It's the name of your tour. <laughs> nice. Yeah, every now and then when the, the mood takes and the windows in the house start rattling. <laughs> Who's that? My son. Oh, yeah. My eldest lad. Weather check. Yep, indeed. Yes. <laughs> and. Perhaps. <laughs> what about. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Good one. Thank you. Yeah. This tension, I assume, is the green one, not the max one, Trevor? It's the max one, and then when you write it down, you reset the max. <coughs> really? Mm-hmm. Good thing I asked. Mm-hmm. So I write it down in the spreadsheet, and then I press that reset button? You do those things in that order. Okay. Training. Done. Great work. Thanks, pal. No problem, chum. Chum. Oh, that was hard work. So, seriously though, what? What, am I, what? what was that? Why is it there? What are we doing? I don't know. What was it? It's usually your camera. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What's that? That, that is the bottom left? Yeah. That should be the A-frame cam. And do we want that for a reason? Is it? How did it get there? How did it get there? Nobody knows. Nobody knows? What do we usually put there? Um, eh. Whoa, whoa, eh. whoa, eh. whoa, 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 chill. That. Fat fingers, sorry. So you didn't need to bother him at all? Feel free to bother me. I mean, I'm here. No, 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 no. This guy's ready. He's here to be bothered. <laughs> He's yeah. here to be bothered. I was just... I didn't want to step <laughs> on someone's toes and just come back in the room and switch it all back, you know? Well, it's, you so pretty much did that anyways, didn't you? I did, because no one would speak up. Cool. Give you a chance and then... Ban it home. Yeah, he can... Like, he can shred, eh? Oh, yeah, he can play. Good for him. I cannot. Sweet. How old's your Sunday? 
That one's 23. How old's the other 16 of them? 17. 17? 17 and 23. Yeah, and daughter's 15. So, any of them out of the house yet? Nope. Just Dave. Just Dave, uh, that's why. He's that's why I'm out of the house. <laughs> it's got 10 more years and then that's it. Yeah, we'll see if we're still breathing that long. You know Dean from Terror Remote? His, his kids are both, two boys are just out of the house and he's like, I don't know what to do. He cut his hair off, that's what he did. Yeah, he did, well that was a while ago. But he'll like sit, to, he says, sits down at the dinner table with his wife and it's like. <laughs> supposed to take, take the boys to soccer or something at least. Nope. Needs a dog. Yeah, he needs a dog. Or a motorbike. <laughs> motorbike with a sidecar for the dog. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So I take it this is the double pink hook that we have to, t that can't unlatch itself. <clears throat> can't unlatch itself, but also just barely fits in the craft. Yeah, that one. Don't want to make it too easy. Yeah. But on the plus side, you don't need to use the jaws on the manip at all. Just slide it on there and it opens. Just sh I'm sorry, how do you spell slide? S C H L I D E. With two C's. <laughs> What's going on in the back row? Everybody's so quiet, typing away. Nervous. Nervous? You nervous, Jeb? I can't hear Jeb. No, me neither. Megan just oh, uh, came go. up and said, uh, now's your last chance, Jeb. It's an autonomous instrument. Did you get all the settings right? So, Ooh. so I just reviewed the uh, log straight and, from the uh, boss. Nice. Uh, everything looks good. Nice. So. And I guess you get to find out if last time it was successful this afternoon. That's right. Today. Yeah. That's Were That's any cool. of you uh, here when this one came back up on deck last time? Well, I'm I sure I was. Remember. Probably. Apparently everyone was freaking out because it sounded like there was electricity crackling. Oh, yes, I remember. Oh, it was, yeah. Uh, it was the yeah. galvanized coating popping or something. Yeah, that was funny. So. Why is it zapping? Yeah. What is Javik doing with his experiments? <laughs> I guess I should run down and give them a heads up when the next one comes No, out. no, no, it's much funnier <laughs> if we don't tell them. Everyone stands clear. <laughs> but then <laughs> somebody runs up and gets me. So. Actually, yeah, you sh instead of telling them, you should go down and then eventually start like a beep. Beep, 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 right. beep, 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 noise on deck. If you touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Gee. <laughs> this is my seventh and last cruise if I do that. <laughs> yeah. Question. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, how do other ships know to keep their distance when the ROVs are in the water? It's done by lights. Lights and flags? Lights Do we have flags up? And usually, uh, I can't remember what the shapes are. I think it might be three balls. Ball, diamond ball. Something like that hanging from the main mast. Yeah. Day shapes, night lights. I don't know what the lights are called. And there must be some kind three of. Three vertically stacked red lights. Some kind of uh, radio traffic frequency that they monitor and broadcast on. I don't know if they broadcast, they just listen on 16. I mean, if like they yeah. see a ship coming close by, there's some channel that they're on that they go. 16. Yeah. We also change um, our status in our AIS to say that we have limited maneuverability. Ooh. So other ships can hopefully see that. Nice. So many different ways. And last time I stepped out the out of the van, we have very low visibility, like like a good 50 feet max or something. Mm hmm I would agree. Hard to see outside of the, well, actually, if you look at the back cam, the aft cam, that's facing directly astern. Kind of why you don't drink and drive, right? You can see that we can't really Wait, see far. Wait, you're not supposed to do that. Low visibility, you can't see. 
Um, the, all ships have, I don't know, I'm pretty sure you have to have radar to be out, mm -hmm. out here. They've all got radar. Yeah. So uh, size, they'll yeah. definitely uh, see us from way far away before they can physically see us with their generally 12 miles. balls of seeing in their heads. I wonder if they also, I know the horn and um, the bell system also is a thing, right? If um, Absolutely. low visibility, you got the... Yep. I've been on ships where the foghorn's just going off and going off. Yeah. It's cool for about 10 minutes. <laughs> so will the beacon auto show up in the spots? Uh, no. Roger. Hard no. They use no NC1. I don't know how to know. I never mind. Don't mind me. I'm just trying to understand how they know. That okay. sounds difficult. So the beacon the beacon should show up once we get like 10, 15 meters down. Yeah, I don't they put it on yet. Yeah, I don't know if it's even on yet. Um I want them to tell me when they Get it in the water. So they have to do a load transfer to get it overboard. They can't lift the package off the deck with the winch because it's a weird side load oh, okay. angle thing. Yeah. So they load it with the crane with the seat catch, bring it over the side, and then load transfer. Okay. And then after that, they pay out a bit and then uh, put the beacon on somehow. I don't know how they're going to do that. Yeah, I don't entirely understand. But Glue. No, I mean, mm. shut up. <laughs> I don't mean method of attachment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. No, I mean. No, what I mean. Uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> uh, good gravy. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I see a comment here from Willem in the Netherlands, if it's our friend Willem who sent us the Star Wars figurines. Thanks. Do you like Star Wars? I think I put out a Star Wars figurine one time. Oh yeah, we put lots of Star Wars figurines on these on I these think, guys, on I the platforms. Not here, but, but I'm confused. He sent the Star Wars figurines from the Netherlands? Yeah. Do they only make them there? <laughs> it's the best quality. Okay. The Dutch are known for their figurines, I guess. The specifically the Star Wars ones. Are you serious, Chip? <laughs> <laughs> well, Star Wars is wooden, yes, wooden shoes and uh, Darth Vader, I guess. <laughs> the last one he sent was, um, who's the uh, Calmari guy? Nice. <laughs> I, I don't know who he is, but I like your name better. <laughs> That's the name of the species. The yes. Admiral, Admiral Akbar. Akbar, nice. That's right. He sent it in memory of his father, who's also a Star Wars fan and uh, oil rig worker. Nice. Yeah. The calamari guy. Love that. <laughs> Great name for him. Loaded or not so loaded question. <laughs> that is the question. Wait, what? Was that the question? <laughs> what role does data analysis play in your work? How do you extract meaningful insights from the vast amount of data collected by the observatory? I love that question. I love it because it's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> 
chap. <laughs> oh no, wait. No, <laughs> isn't there there are better people on board to answer. I mean if we had a few scientists they could tell you. If only I mean of course Ocean Networks Canada is we have staff scientists who are, you know, writing papers and publishing uh, under the Ocean Networks Canada banner, and there's a number of collaborative scientists, folks who get in touch with us who want to use our data. Um, I think that's a case-by-case -case thing, I would imagine. You know, the specialists in each area mm -hmm. can look at the data. Sometimes you go in with a hypothesis. I'm sure some people are just touring through and picking up interesting things. Um, it's more of a out of the realm of my engineering experience. <laughs> It's accessible though, hey? A lot of the data, all of the data? Yeah, data.oceanetworks.ca. It's uh, all free. You can download, if you wanted 10 years of pressure data, go for it. Do I? <laughs> I always thought it would be neat to- uh, Say the nicest things. To run it, <laughs> run it through like, uh, speed it up, you know, a thousand times and see what it sounds like. Cause you'd get, I guess the, the title Thank signal. Thank you for there. that. <laughs> Trevor? <laughs> that'd be cool, yeah. I love that concept. Yeah. Have you ever done it? I haven't done it. I don't know how to process that, that much data. Mm. That's what I'm going to get my future, I, if I ever get another one, future future partner for their like birthday or something. Right. Here's 10 years of the sounds of the ocean. ocean. Fresher sounds. <laughs> well, it was kind of neat. Uh, NASA in the 70s with the Voyager data, they put out a couple albums where they took like the magnetometer and the radiometer readings, nice. translated them to sound. Uh, Appropriately silly. <laughs> yeah. Next oh. level music. Yeah. <laughs> What's the status on our? Other vehicle off the banana crane. Banana crane, loving that name. Uh oh, did they call it the wrong thing? No, that's what it's called. That's mm -hmm. what it's called. Absolutely. That's the name I know for it. Cool. I see clumpy. I see a weight. Clumpy. <laughs> I got a. 47 lines going on up there too. I don't know what the scoop is. <coughs> Something tells me we're going to be able to cycle through breakfast. Something really. tells you, eh? Hey? That would be is. nice. Yeah. <coughs> AJ was saying about 40 minutes of descent time. So even if they hit the go button right now, as long as we all ate by 8 a.m., we'd be laughing.
Well, what do you want to do, Trevor, one at a time, or you go and then we go, or? One at a time is probably fine. I mean, there's not much going on, so we can do two at a time. But there's three of us. <laughs> <Yeah. Matt. laughs> <Did Yeah>. Dave. <laughs> oh. I'm eating for two. It's <laughs> like the numbers yeah, are my, floating up yeah, here. Uh, <laughs> my head just twisted. <laughs> Everybody gets a second breakfast. We all go twice. <laughs> hobbits, ROV hobbits. Yeah, exactly. When's eleven? These. <laughs> you know what's funny mm. is uh, I grew up not knowing that second breakfast was a weird thing to say. Really? Yeah, I just that's what I yeah, did. You had breakfast just, and second when, breakfast. When yeah, Hannah first we always had second breakfast. Yeah. Uh, we always had second yeah, breakfast. It was, was a thing. I daily have every, every day I have second <laughs> breakfast. Hannaford and I were running around New Zealand. We had second breakfast every day. Yeah. And, and I don't think we were referring to the hobbits. We just wanted another breakfast. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> First breakfast is like porridge, and then second do, breakfast is a real breakfast. And second oh. breakfast is, yeah, eggs, eggs. And potatoes and bread. And Yummy. And you have brunch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I never have brunch. <laughs> Who's hungriest? Who wants to go? Who's going? What are we doing? Go What's for happening? a bit. I can survive. I could also eat first. <clears throat> you want to go? Have at it. I'll go, and then you can fight to the death. Someone's removed the pause key from the keyboard. Just oh. gonna sit in here. <laughs> Good. Perfect. <laughs> it's fine. I guess. I guess they didn't like pausing. I'm guessing that's, oh, is that the package still sitting on the deck there, is it? I don't think so. I think or the is it already on the way? Because they're... The they, package they, is just, a, uh, I think it's on the way. Hmm. Well, I don't know. We don't, don't got any beacon hits yet, eh? No, I'm going to call the deck. Okay, I hope they'd tell us before they just yeah. start giving her. Actually, copy what he said there. Uh, it's not in the water. He let us know. Yep. Thank you. Hey, are you able to move Cam amid this guy here? Maybe we can see the yellow crane a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. Please? Yeah, give me one moment there. That would be pretty neat. Yeah, let's see what I can do here. Yeah, that's the hot ticket. Sweet, thank you. How's that? 
That's great. There you go. Love it. <clears throat> so package and hook are below the clump by seven meters. Okay. And then they're planning to put the beacon about 25 meters above the clump. Mm -hmm. So that way it'll be about the same distance off bottom as Atalanta. So when we're reapproaching it, watching touchdown or whatever, we got beacons at the same depth so we know where they're at. Okay. We'll see it on sonar anyway. Yeah. We have a viewer who would like to swim out to the boat from the coast of Washington. Hmm. Yeah. That'd be an impressive feat. Yeah. I would not like to do that. No. Mm -hmm. Or <laughs> work up to it, maybe. <laughs> How far are we offshore right now? Yeah, excellent question. See if it's within my swimming range. 100 meters. It was some guy just died trying to swim the English Channel. Oh yeah. Last week maybe, week before, just before I came out here. That's a pretty, I don't want to say pretty common, but that's the thing people do, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of people do it for charities and things yeah, like right. that. Yeah. What's that distance? Like about 22, 23 miles at okay. its closest point. long way. Yeah, too far for me. Too far for me. Oh, he's got the pike pole going on here. Uh-oh. Oh. Looks like we're about 120 kilometers from land. I don't think I'll be swimming that. <laughs> Better split it in two. What's that? I split it into two. I wouldn't do it all at once. Would you do it in two? <laughs> no. <laughs> I split it into 120. <laughs> Package coming out.
Auto iris, thank you. Neat. Oh, yeah. Just maybe somewhere between those two would be better. Yeah. Okay, what, just don't, maybe. My daughter's just sent me a message, voice message. I said, you sure you want me to listen to this? And she went, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> said, I'm at work. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> the whole world doesn't need to hear it. <laughs> yeah, on comms, yeah, nice. Mm. Funny thing with those voice messages, eh? You don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah. <coughs> no, she's she's pretty good about it, to be fair, and she's only 15, so. Right on. It's it's not going to be out of order, but. <laughs> Yeah, this would be good doing this landing and everything on a full stomach. Maybe a fresh yeah, coffee nice, or whatever. Yeah. A little easier on the stress. <clears throat> nice and calm, no hurry, no rush to eat. It's perfect. Nowhere to be.
Because he doesn't talk to me this much when I'm at home. <laughs> <laughs> Still got a bunch of wires hanging off that thing. I don't know what's going on. Oh, hanging off of the banana crane? Yeah. It really does look like a banana. Mm. Got the curves, got the black spots. So, I said to you that she doesn't talk to me this much at home. Yeah. She's messaged back. I do talk to you this much at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. She's listening? Yeah. Right on. Hello. Hey, Leila. Not the most exciting time to tune in. <laughs> no. Wrap tail coming in. Oh, yeah, could be. If you want, you can line up for a zoom on that. I don't do anything else. Sounds good to me. Zooming in. Look at this spiky back. I like these guys. Pull them back out. Nice. What other organisms can we um, see at the bottom here? I feel like I can see some sea stars and like Maybe yeah. cucumbers. Yeah, some sea stars, sea cucumbers down there. I think there's a little jellyfish floating down now. Um, over here. Yep. A little oh. wiggly wormy thingy. That is a swimmer, I believe. Swimmer. Yeah. There's two types of worm, basically. One's called a swimmer. The other's called a floater. Ah. There it goes again. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think there's a third one called the sinker. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try and zoom in on that? Yeah, that cucumber down there? Yeah. Yeah, let's see what we can find. All right, stand by.
sea cucumber. That's yep. And then like a small urchin down there too. Urchin. Look like. Next to the sea star. Yeah. Brittle star. A lot of worm casts. Okay, mate, you can zoom back out again. Yep, pull back out. Thank you. Bang, bang, back to something. Was breakfast. Lovely. Excellent. Um, yeah, it's still there. <laughs> Poor kid. This would be called troubleshooting, yes? Standing by. Standing by. Jeb, did you get breakfast? Uh, no, I haven't eaten yet. I was thinking AJ might pop up and we could trade off, but we'll see. Is that AJ in the green? Yeah. Although, I mean, there's not much for either of us to say at the moment, I guess. Mm-hmm. Thanks for checking in, Josh. Just looking out for you, buddy. <laughs> Don't want you to waste away. There's not much of me left. Gotta fatten you up. Put on some buoyancy. Not quite Doritos, is it? You want to go? <laughs> no. I can never find them over here in the U.S., Canada, whatever. But in the U.K., we have big these big Doritos or chili heat wave. Mm -hmm. We have oh, chili heat man. Doritos. I don't know if they're big, but they're amazing. <clears throat> We've got the sweet and spicy chili Doritos. Is that what it is here? I think so. I might have to give that a go when I find them. Best Dorito in my opinion. No. Turn off's got his belly pack off. something. <laughs> People watching can make our own conversations of what might be going on. Oh, there's a, another fishy rat tail. Yeah, that's the one that went through before. And then the sea cucumber looks like it's swimming now. Yep, that'll be good to see. If we can get around enough, you want to try and zoom in on that? Yeah, absolutely. 
I don't know how much further around. I can't get any further to yeah, it. That's about the closest I can get. I'm blocking it with the arm. I love watching these guys swing. Cool. What are we looking at? That's a sea cucumber. Doing the wave. On the move. So much cooler than land cucumbers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Pull back out? Yes, please. All righty. She gone. There's another one. Hanging out. Oh, what kind of fish we got here? I'm not sure what that one is. What is that? I can't tell either. No. Can we zoom? Go on ahead, yeah. Zoom in. All right, go on ahead. Come on, big fella. There we there go. There we go. Yeah, I don't know. That's one for Jeff. Okay, we can come back out wide. All right, coming wide. Cheers. Deb, how did you get into the career that you're in now? I guess I liked taking things apart when I was a kid. Mm. <laughs> and then uh, out of high school, I applied to be an electronics technologist program at college, community college, and did that for three years. And then got a job in uh, avionics, aircraft electronics manufacturing, so controls for landing gear and propellers and data recorders and uh, the whole time I had been interested in ocean technology mm. maybe <laughs> a little self-conscious to say I'd followed Dr. Ballard's you know, explorations quite a bit as a young like as a kid watching documentaries and that and then the opportunity came up at the University of Victoria for a marine technician um, applied to it and then shortly after I graduated from my bachelor's degree, I got the offer and moved from Ontario all the way to BC and took the job. So no prior experience in marine technology, but uh, a lot of transferable skills from other electronics background and then just a lot of learning on the job. <laughs> and that's with uh, ONC? That's, yeah, ONC under the University of Victoria. So. I got the job when I was 29, and then you kind of say, did I just hit all of my career goals all, all of a sudden? Like, where do I go from here? <laughs> I got my dream job. But uh, it's been pretty exciting. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Is this your first year with OET? It's my second year with yeah. OET. Yeah. You like it? Myself? I guess there's no, I can't, you can't, there's no other, there's only one answer to that on the comms. <laughs> mm, I feel like it, the new year can be truthful. There could be like a, uh, maybe, kind of like it. Like, you know, like <laughs> dating, it's like you're in the first motions of dating. It's like, I kind of like you. We still need to see a couple more dates later. We'll see how I'm I see. Like. So how far along in your dating with OET are you then? This is only my second date. So second date. Yeah. Wow, it's an important one. I know. Okay. I think uh, three weeks at sea is a pretty good second date. Mm. <laughs> That's a long date. <laughs> <laughs> Forced. Extended. Yeah. <clears throat>
the, the taxi cab drive home is much longer than we're expecting. Mm -hmm. How about yourself, John? Yeah, imagine if you went on a date with somebody and they took you on a boat and you're like, all right, this is cool, and then they just took you offshore. <laughs> <laughs> you packed your bags, right? Oh, for, the ocean. For another week, right? Yeah. I think that's just kidnapping. <laughs> What's that? I think that's just kidnapping at that point, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good point. Uh, oh. Fair. Oh, right. He's like, oh, damn it. Damn. That's okay, all right. That's where I went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why the cops are waiting for me. Zero to a hundred real quick. <laughs> How about yourself, yourself, Josh? Which date number is this for you with OET? With OET? This is my second date, but I had mm. six years between dates. Oh. Yeah. You, you needed some time to think about that. Yeah, the I reply. really, when I, do, when I date somebody, I really got to think about if it's the right fit after the first date for six years before I can commit to another one. The first date was so questionable. You left them on red for some time. <laughs> yep, yep. <clears throat> no, uh, I like, I love working on the Nautilus and with this vehicle. i just busy with uh, other vehicles, I guess. <clears throat> Or maybe maybe it was it wasn't my choice. It was the other the person the person I was dating that didn't want to go on the second date for six years because I don't think they asked me. <laughs> uh, Great, grateful for the second chance. Absolutely, yeah. Got to make the most of it. Dave. Although I've I've done I don't know twenty to thirty cruises for ONC. Mm. That's really why where I get the. Mm -hmm. Why I get invited at all? Mm. Just because just they like, well, they don't like me, but they tolerate me. <laughs> of course, we like you, Josh. <laughs> you don't have to lie, Jeff. It's okay. But thanks. <laughs> Dave, is this your first date? It is. <laughs> first date with OET. How's that going? How is this First going? impressions. It seems to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been given the bill yet. <laughs> what is that starting meal? Or is it called an appetizer? I'd say we're still at the appetizer right now. Like mm. First drink right now. Oh, oh I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Is this your usual line of work? I mean... Yeah, it's in between this and man subs. Mm. Spent best part of 30-something years at sea now. And the last 15 exclusively with ROVs mm. and man subs, so... It keeps me busy. How much of your manned submersible work was scientific? Um, I would say so far 90% of it. Right. And you still have to do the odd jolly with, you know, the guys on the big yachts. Right. But you know, a lot of it's the science work. I'd say nowadays, 100% of my ROV work is all science expeditions. Right. I keep on thinking about scuba, science uber. Oh. How true or not so true might that be? Bunch of scuba divers. <laughs> scuba drivers. There we go. Hi. You good? This might take a while. <clears throat> just let it free spool. They're just dropping it. We're here. Oh, we're here till three. All right. I hope so. Yeah.
Oh, I get right. Yeah, it's my time to shine. Oh, copy and paste. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting real good at it. Let's <laughs> <coughs> change the time. We're doing a quick watch change of video. Just a couple seconds here. Done. <laughs> okay, what do we got? Gauges are all solid. Still, yeah, okay. Res. And the craft. The res is sitting there, that's where it's sitting before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which one's a craft? Four? Nope. Three? It, I think it changes every bloody time, you know. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's still good. still the same. Yeah. Neato, gang.
It's overrated. SPL test one, two, three, four. Hey, it's you now. The other uh, hey. shift switched over four hours ago so silently that I didn't, I was sitting in the Herc chair and didn't yeah. even notice. But you came in just guns a blazing. <laughs> I'm known for that. I could smell <laughs> you before you got in here. That's not what I'm known for. <laughs> 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 So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The yellow one's Hercules. <laughs> yeah. I have the, the beacon all set up in Sonardyne, too, so Lynette and I did that. How neat That's is that? It's all ready to go. It'll show up everywhere we need it. Is it a switchy Yanni or a... Levy Ani. It is a switchy Ani. Okay, neat. And it's written down to switchy on, and I told everyone I could that it's a switchy Ani. You didn't tell me. I, I yeah, you didn't tell me. Okay, yeah, I didn't now. tell me. I don't know who, who did you tell. Does it cook now? It's hard to get a hold of people who are on twelves. You know, you uh, guys are doing your own thing, sleeping a regular amount of time. <laughs> no, I didn't. I don't know. I slept from six p.m. till eight p.m. That was I great. saw you. Yeah, at you got. What happened? You just couldn't sleep. That's it? Yeah, it's messed up, yeah. So I have insomnia too. I saw yeah, I saw you uh enter the hangar at like three AM. That's when I should be. Well that's when we should be ha entering. <laughs> oh no, it that's wasn't three. My shift, yeah. It was it was like it was I guess when did you come up? Be like two, two thirty? Two. Two's when my alarm set. Yeah, maybe it was I don't know when you came up. That's when we all entered it. <laughs> I saw you come into that yeah. and five minutes after three. <laughs> you were up early. <laughs> All right, today I'm the one who can't count. <laughs> I'm the one who has trouble with numbers today. Yeah, you but I don't, I don't even know if there's any burgers in this room or not. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. It's a tough one to know for anybody, really. <laughs> I guess that's true. I saw Jake up at three. Yep. He was up at three. Yep. He's always there. Yeah. Always right where you need him. Sleeping on the social deck? Up. Up. Up, up high. <laughs> Speaking of up high, are we recovering or are we just like this altitude? What, with the vehicle? <laughs> She's uh, pretty bouncy, let's say. Four meters up. How come you're yeah. so super duper quiet there, Ed? Yeah, my mic's not working. Oh. I'm having to just scream and talk through yours. <laughs> I have the weirdest settings right now with this. So, like, everyone's turned down. And oh, I can reset those New for you. Yeah, can you reset? Yeah. Stand by. I could do it myself if you want. Nah. We're pretty busy. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a one Thank you. thing over here. Wow, you got everybody turned down. <coughs> yeah. You should show her there's a volume knob. I know. Well, that was it. It was like everyone's turned down and the volume was turned up. So I just heard not. static. Thank you. Yeah. Now I have to read. I'm going to set my side tone. What do you run your side tone at, Randy? Uh, just pretty low. I run mine at plus seven because I'm fond of hearing myself talk. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I don't like what I say or what I sound like. <laughs> so it's not what I sound like. Is, I don't like what I say. This is just a general outlook problem, I think. <laughs> Ed seems really happy. <laughs> Make some inferences there. Mm -hmm. Maybe more beets in your diet. Yeah. Maybe a radish in your mouth. Yeah. Huge beat fan. 
I used to get soap or Tabasco. Usually soap. Mm. If what? You, if I got that. Oh, I, okay. You check, know. check, check, check. Yeah, I was at minus there. 20. I need to get like down a little lower than that. <laughs> there we go. Minus 22. Let's go, let's go. Hey there, folks. Hey. How about uh, a oh, cup hey of coffee? Yeah, hey oh, there. Oh, hey there. Hey there. Uh, hey there, folks. <laughs> it's the Canadian, the eh? Canadian. <laughs> so the Canadians got some questions for you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Oh, All righty, Odin, eh? All righty, Odin. Let's have some questions, eh? Shh. Sorry to bother you. Fire off some questions, would you? <laughs> what did I walk into? <laughs> How many pet beavers do you have? <laughs> um, I don't think that's appropriate. <laughs> you guys no. seen that video where it's a beaver like in the center lane of a highway? I think somebody has stopped to help it, but cars are screaming by. And somebody has gone, and every time a car goes by, they put this voice in and it goes, Welcome to Canada. <laughs> you know, beavers, have, have you ever seen beavers in the wild? Yeah. yeah. And they, you know how they flap their tails? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty loud. sketchy. Yeah, it's loud. Yeah, yeah I was up uh, and we heard this slapping. And we're up in this pristine lake up in Strathcona Park. And uh, we're like, what is this thing? What is this sound? And it took us like half a day to figure it out. And we were out walking along and then saw the beavers. We were like, oh my gosh, it's a yeah. bunch of beavers. Hmm. Yeah. Slapping away. Slapping away. Do you think they see a river and they're just like, nope? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what happens. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was pretty easy. Right. Next, okay, next question. <laughs> okay, next question. Ask tougher questions, Josh. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so here's some some uh, pertinent questions. questions to <laughs> some relevant questions. <laughs> some relevant questions. How about this? Okay, so this was asked by uh, one of our viewers. What's the wind speed limit for a ship holding position? Mm. Oh, I love well, that question. Yeah, That's I love question, I love I that question. Uh, it's going to depend on uh, the the ship itself, how it's shaped, and also the the mainly it's going to be the uh, dynamic positioning system. So for ROV work, we have to have a way to hold the ship um, in a single position. That way, when we get to the bottom, we're not dragging the ROVs around. Um, so for this ship, we have a jet pump in the stern of the ship and a bow thruster on the bow, and we're able to hold station based on GPS. Um, so there's a computer that's controlling those two uh, methods of propulsion that are keeping us, um, you know, on a on a point within within a certain you know uh, leniency um, as far as how many meters it can stray away before it an alarm sounds. Um, and with our system, you know, we start to. We start to raise eyebrows it. around 20 knots, and then 25 is kind of about the limit. Can you hit cam a mid? That's usually where we're at. So um, 20, yeah. 25 knots is, is not yeah. a good scene. That's That starts to be not a good scene. We we can't go much fur further than that because the ship can blow off station, especially if you have a gust of wind, um, a beam of the ship. So, but it's also, it's really all the forces on the ship. So wind is one of those components. Uh, the current is another, which in some places can be quite strong. And uh, the last would be the waves and swell itself. So as they slap against the ship, that's going to push on the ship a little bit. So all of those things together uh, make like up like the forces that we can, tails. like the, yeah, the slap of a thousand beaver tails. <laughs> that's that's how they measure. That's how they measure the force. <laughs> the force of waves. It's like horsepower. It's all animal related when you go back. Obviously. <laughs> Ever hear the sound of one tail slapping? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we used that. Yeah, used that, right? yeah she, she has. Yeah. We already talked about that. I'm All right, sorry. yeah, next question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Excellent job. Thank you very much. Um, wondering about uh, live metadata for yes. the video mm. images. Mm. Do, we, do we have access to the live metadata? We certainly do. So you just have to go to either, um, well, I think 
Nautilus carries some of that, doesn't it, Ed? You mean as far as uh, being able to view stuff or the metadata, the text live, information about? Live metadata, as in live video footage? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, we stream stuff live, but as far as like metadata, like fish identification and stuff, we have data loggers uh, on board who note what species we're, we're imaging and uh, things of uh, note, like uh, predation events, mm -hmm. etc. And Ocean Networks Canada has a fantastic uh, uh, marine life identification guide that they have available on their web website, oceannetworks.ca. Yeah, I, I think that one's a, that uh, identification guide is an iBook. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so, uh, so I you think can I have that on my phone now that you mention it. Yeah, so check that out on iBook. And then uh, frequently people review the uh, dive footage just to log and categorize those. On this dive, we did uh, uh, a 1,000 meter vertical video transect at the start of the dive. So from the surface down to 1,000 meters, we went at one third of our normal speed with the camera pointed purely ahead. And uh, uh, every frame of that footage will be reviewed and uh, will quantify the number of organisms in the water column. It's very easy with ROVs to do work on the seafloor, but exceptionally difficult to do anything mid-water. And there's not a lot of work. There's more devices being developed for that. But as far as metadata goes, we also uh, incorporate and embed metadata about the position of the ROV and the time and what dive it is and sometimes sensor data into the closed captioning space of the video files that people get as a result of this work. So any researcher is able to look at the footage and just immediately see where that was captured at and when, maybe what the dissolved oxygen or the water temperature was. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of work about that. That's a core deliverable are these video files. And there's uh, lots of organizations that do this type of work and then try and extract as much value as they can from the footage, even if we're out here doing ocean engineering for a cabled observatory, we're still trying to uh, derive as much value from the footage as possible. So yeah. the data is a core way to do that. Ship ship time is expensive. <clears throat> yes. Might as well make it, uh, you know. And there are, as a result, no idle moments out here. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, I was I was sleeping while you were all diving. Yeah, never. Twenty four hour operations. Yeah, never an idle we moment. go twenty four hours a day. Yeah, that's awesome. Sometimes and 25. And that's great because we, we also have some viewers from uh, Brazil. Actually, two different groups from Brazil have chimed in. Well, so way to go, Brazil. Yeah, and and uh, uh, Portuguese, we'll welcome them with hola. <laughs> uh, and we have uh, several uh, crew members from Brazil. Yes. And one of our scientists is from Brazil. Yeah, yeah. so w in good company. Welcome to our watching Brazilians. And obrigado for watching. Yeah. Um, so those, those are both my Portuguese words right there. So I'm all out. <laughs> Ed, this is Ed tapping out. Yeah. Um, actually, Ed, with that transect, um, and and maybe Sean, if you were on, um, I think you were on overnight too. Oh, what I was? was on. Yeah. We have um, we have a question about the coolest and fascinating thing that we've seen so far, like. This dive? Or yeah, this dive. Okay. Um, yeah, well, you know, during that transect, we saw, you know, a transition from the shallows into 1,000 meters depth. Uh, so we got to see a pretty good view of all the, you know, little critters that were actually uh, <clears throat> migrating uh, diurnally or semi diurnally down the water column. Um, so, yeah, we saw a bunch of lantern fish there. Well, oh, whoa, 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 one like sec there, Sean. Diurnal. Tell me about what the, what does diurnal mean for our viewers? Okay, diurnal would be like a daily kind of phenomenon, a cycle in, in days. So semi-diurnal would be once every half day. Right on. So these uh, migrations, right? Yeah, so, you know, semi-diurnal would be, well, during one half of the day, they'll go up the water column, and then during the other half of the day, they'll go down the water column. Very cool, and like so uh, the big, predation avoidance and stuff? Yeah, the big, well, the big thing that they're doing is actually chasing prey. So they're, they're chasing little copepods, phytoplankton, that kind of thing. Uh, things that tend to chase the sun when uh, 
when the autotrophs come out. And Sean, were those lantern fish between like four and 600 meters, somewhere in that range? Yeah, there were a lot during that range. So if you do go back to our video metadata, you could actually see uh, during that time in the video transect, that was probably the, the uh, most populous region of the lantern fish. They were everywhere. There were a few squid too, a uh, little bit shallower. Um, the deeper you go, the less you see. Uh, and there's, there can be so many, so many of those lantern fish. They'll show up in our mapping data. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. And they're frequently also seen at the southern portion of the Plate of Juan de Fuca at Axial Seamount. Yeah, you that's see very lantern interesting. Lantern fish there a lot as well. Yeah, I think lantern fish uh, are a pretty important part of the food chain up here. Uh, so, you know, the the slightly larger organisms will get those, but yeah, very important. Very cool. <clears throat> and um, on this this species question, um, did we have we encountered or seen anything new that we haven't been able to identify? Well, I mean, there are always things I don't know what they are. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I'm a biologist by trade, but that doesn't mean I know everything. Um, yeah. So, you know, sometimes it, it's worth it to just get that field guide out and uh, cross-reference what's there. Um, but yeah, you know, like there, there are pretty standard things in that water column uh, that I saw, you know, uh, jellies, comb jellies, say fauna-fours, I think we saw one. Um, so yeah, nothing too out of the ordinary. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, those are those are the questions up to date. So uh, thanks for that. And um, we did have some questions about uh, the the winch there, the banana arm. I guess we call it. Is that right? This is my first day. Our banana winch. The banana or winch. Or a banana crane, you mean? Yeah, the crane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I I just came on, and it's my my first day, literally. Um, and maybe, maybe you could tell me what we're, what we're doing. Oh, that's, uh, who's on this watch, Dirk or AJ? That's a question for those guys. Uh, I, I can just give you the dive plan. AJ's overview. currently down on the aft deck, so yeah. I don't, don't think you're going to okay, well, get we'll, him to answer. We'll, um, we'll circle back to that question, um, and give folks a, a better answer in a little bit. And we do have that um, that shot showing the uh, banana cranes on the Nautilus Live Sat 3 feed. That's why people may be asking the questions. The crane's a recent addition to the Nautilus and it's been used to uh, launch and recover autonomous surface vessels that can go out and map the seafloor for three to four days and then be returned as the trend for ocean science is to do these types of operations with many different vehicles. So, uh, so are you talking like gliders and stuff? or No, what these are large surface vessels that are like eight meters long. Okay. Uh, and have, uh, you know, full engines on them, full complement of sensors and can do mapping and uh, go out so they, that way you can be in an area like this, deploy a you know human controlled ROV, deploy a, glide, a couple gliders, deploy an autonomous surface vessel, and really maximize the, the data products you get from a mission. Very cool. Right on. Okay, looks like they're paying out again for real this time. I don't believe so. Well, they're paying out fast. Uh -huh. Yeah.
All right, uh, just um, another quick question here asking about the glider. Uh, we, we actually have autonomous gliders that uh, go with the currents in the water. So they don't, yeah, they, they kind of fly within the water column. So there you go. And further to the person asking about the glider, uh, you can see some great photos of the gliders on the Ocean Networks Canada website, so oceannetworks.ca. And just uh, type in the search bar there, glider, and you will see what we're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Deck control. Just want to triple check that that beacon has been turned on. Roger. Yeah, the line has been connect pushed to the line. O is open, line is on. And on that, yeah, there's a little symbol. Yeah. <coughs> We'll find out in a minute. It's actually a lot easier for this one. Just bring it back up if it's not. <laughs> uh, I'm going to switch you over to Sonardyne while that happens, if, if you can afford to lose it. Roger that, O is off. It is on. Copy, I'm ready to ping once you lower it. No, it's in the water. Copy. <laughs> Copy. Copy. Copy, Roger, understood. See, this is that problem that we're saying. That you see the the yellow ones. That's the raw, and the green is the filter. The fi like the filter does things that the raw isn't influencing at all. So I'm I'm just recording raw on everything or displaying raw on everything. But what? But why would the filter do, do that? It's kind of curious. 
It's supposed to be kind of bang on. All right. So as we're watching, um, we have someone joining us from New Zealand and just saying uh, that we're doing an awesome job. So I wanted to pass along the kudos. And uh, speaking of job, maybe um, someone wants to pop in and tell us about uh, your career path. Before someone does that, I'm just going to throw out there, maybe somebody can type in if the person in New Zealand has a name that starts with the letter M. I'd be curious <laughs> about that. So I don't know. Does we'll the find person... Out. So. We'll find out. I'll let you know. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll let someone else jump on the career thing. <clears throat> Trevor, how'd you get into this business? <laughs> I did. A uh, degree of mechanical engineering at the University of Victoria. And then I was in the right place at the right time. That's great. Thanks. How did you get into this business, Randy? Hmm. Well, uh, I went to school for geography and focused on remote sensing and geospatial data kind of stuff. And then was doing land-based remote sensing and eventually found my way to ocean stuff actually via Nautilus, an internship on Nautilus um, in 2013. Control van, control van deck, transponder is in the water. Copy. Uh, there's a, uh, what is that thing called? Can I zoom? You can zoom. Yeah. What are these things? What are you looking at? It's this like a flamboyant squid worm. Oh, that's a polychaete. <laughs> there is a picnogonid down there, I think, though. What? Yeah. Uh, there it is. Or no, no, my mistake. Those are just stars of some kind. Seeing stars? Seeing uh, stars. I thought come it was on. Yeah, picnogonids have way more legs than I think. <coughs> that's full Deck full control? Wide. Uh, yeah, we are tracking the beacon. Neat. Neat. There it is. All right, I'm going to go back to the other one. Make sure it's in there. You in there, buddy? Oh, there it is. Okay. It's a little white one. It's a little white thing, so I could... I hope it stays that small and hard to see. It is. I could... Uh... Can oh, you make no. those... Uh... Oh, no? It's just the zoom-in's taken off. It's taking a second. Can you make those grids more dull? <sighs> <laughs> it's like the number one thing on my list for them. Yeah. But it seems so insignificant. That was pretty annoying. Yeah, everything's also pretty... Also, they're on top of the vehicles. Oh, I can change that, perhaps. The grid being on top of the vehicle. Mm, maybe I can't. <laughs> How about how about that? <coughs> That's bigger. Yep, sure well, is. We make circle twenty four. Twenty. All right. Now it's kind of like I like that. You know, yeah. when I can see it from afar. Yeah. I don't know. Do you like it? It's too big. <laughs> <laughs> Not the scale. It needs more grid. I mean, it's okay. Make it whatever size you want. I don't care. Make it visible. Look, okay. I'll make the I'll make the trail a little. No, I don't really care where, the, where it's been. I only care where it's going. Where did you come from? So it's coming straight for. So let's imagine we're stretched out here. Mm -hmm. As long as it doesn't <coughs> come over our way, we don't really have much control over that, though. Nope. Not much we can do except for drive away more. Because you're only a little bit. Mm. I'm pulling on nothing. Not pulling on nothing. Nope, that's not. 
They're flying down. Look at that. 60 meters a minute. <laughs> are you seeing that somewhere, or that's you just know it's capability? I asked AJ, how fast are you going to go down? He yeah. said, one meter per second. And you did the math yourself? Yeah, I carried the nothing. I did see you pack your abacus in your sea bag. Mm. I just got the travel size one. It's pretty nice. Yeah, here's the sound of a single hand clapping for you. Oh, you don't hear it? Oh. <laughs> nice math, nice math. <laughs> so, Renny, that land-based uh, sensing you were doing, is that using LiDAR like in that book you recommended to me? <laughs> I, I was indeed using LiDAR. Yeah. I was using terrestrial LiDAR on uh, rock glaciers in the Andes. That was my project. Cool. I know a guy that could do one hand clapping. He could move his hand in such a way it would clap itself. All right, yeah. I, I have another question come in, and I, Ed, you gave an answer to this before. Um, so, I'll give a is, different answer this time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, so you're looking at uh, Canadian equipment. Is there a piece of equipment on board um, that we have that's truly Canadian? Oh, and we have my favorite. Yeah, tell yeah, us. Yeah, that's uh, the Telestrator. Excellent. Which is a tool we use in the back row. Uh, our scientists can tell us to, uh, exactly where to go, where to not go, and give us visual cues to the pilots using a piece of equipment uh, made by a firm called Fingerworks. Is that the one that is streamed ashore? Uh, we don't stream it most of the time because it would it just replicates what's uh, already streaming. Yeah, but right. If we have shoreside colleagues and we're trying to communicate with them, we use it, but it's, it makes it very easy for the back row to point out exactly where they're talking about mm -hmm. to the us operators in the front Can row. you make that smaller, Renny? Purely Thanks. Canadian. And uh, they're the 15. ones who came up with the innovative technology. Yeah, you we were <laughs> demonstrating it yesterday and it was pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, super helpful. Helpful to be able to uh, communicate what, what needs to get done with um, various, you know. Yeah. And that was uh, installed and has uh, custom tools developed for ROV work. Uh, uh, thanks to the CEO of that organization. Uh, the other thing that's uniquely Canadian is our ROV operations management and staffing, which comes out of, uh, what's the name of that valley up island? Uh, are you referring to the Comox Valley? That's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of great people that come out of that area. And, uh, wow. And our uh, RV staff. Don't uh, everyone move to Comox. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got a Costco. It's got to be a big place, right? <laughs> Shh. That's a secret. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm... Uh, it's interesting to me that everyone that uh, works on the ship comes from all over the place and uh, all join up, do the expedition, head back home to our various corners of uh, North America. Uh, and South America and Europe and... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'm... Yeah. Got a lot of uh, Central and South American, North American... Uh, Irish, <coughs> uh, uh, United Kingdom, yeah. Very yeah, cool. It's all over. Uh, Peru, Brazil, uh, uh, Uruguay, Panama, Honduras, Mexico, yeah. Uh, cool. Los Estados Unidos, and Canada. Yeah. Oh, my cable's too short. So an international crew. Everyone working together. Do you mind popping out of Auto XY for a second? And I will do a reset. Okay, you're good to go. Thank you.
Hey, Ed, do you have any extension cables? Oh, man. You know what's so funny is yesterday I put that on my to-do list for that position. Nice. So I have a task list, but I don't have the actual extension okay. cable. But I thought that I would can be helpful over, over there. Can you move me this way? Yeah. Yeah, okay, <laughs> thanks. Uh, you know what I do have? That control? I can hardly hear you, by the way. Oh, uh, sorry. Just letting you know our beacon depth reads 506 meters. Jedi reading is 506 meters. You know, I rarely get complaints about that. Um, I, uh, I do have a wireless belt pack you can use instead. This is fine. <laughs> oh, I don't want to go deluxe. I mean, if you huh? want, great, but um, yeah. I'll be in. I'll survive. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Seems too official. I also still have in the desk downstairs a foot pedal mute switch that we just never got wired up for you. Still on the to-do list. Not really, but could be. Should change it to a fuzz pedal. Oh, wah wah. Just mess with the video person. Yeah. Something's wrong. Just throwing. <laughs> on. We've got that now at the data position because when Sean keys his mic, it sounds like he's in our traffic helicopter high overhead. Yeah, this just in weather looks very cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Where's my trash can? Right there. What's it doing over there? Hanging out? Yeah. What would you be doing if you were there? Probably the same. Yeah. Yeah, see? That filter is like... What are you doing, filter? All over the place. Two of them. Two ops. So we expect the beacon to be about... Go for nav. Go for nav. Yeah. 